In this tutorial, you're going to see how to create an animated dissolve effect using the visual shader editor in Godot 3.1. I've made a simple scene that contains a plane, a directional light, and a sphere. I'm going to select the sphere and we're going to focus on creating the shader here. Let's add a new material to our sphere, a new shader material because we're going to code our material from the start. Then expand the material and in the shader tab, create a new visual shader. Once you click on it, this should open the visual shader editor in the bottom panel. Note that by default, the mode is going to be spatial. You can also create 2D shaders or particle shaders with it. And you have a few modes and flags that you can change in the inspector. For our shader, we want to deactivate culling. This is hiding or not rendering some faces that are facing away from the camera. So we don't want that, we want to see through the object. And then you have the depth row parameter that's going to control how the object is going to be drawn and we want to use alpha prepass as our object will be transparent. We're going to not even care about the view, we can expand the bottom panel by clicking the button in the bottom right of it. And at first, in our shader graph, we just have the output of our shader. At the top of the viewport, you can see we are working on the fragment shader, meaning that we are working on the pixels rendered on screen. And that is what we want to animate here. With this tool, you're going to create your shaders out of a node graph. You can click the Add Node button at the top of the interface to add a new node or right click anywhere on the graph. We're going to start with the inputs. We want to add some UVs, so we're going to add them. Once you are on the list, if it goes out of the view, you can scroll with your mouse wheel to find the other options and we want to click on input at the bottom. I'm going to change the input to the UV, the UV coordinates of our model. The good thing about using the graph editor in Godot is that you can click the little eye icon here to preview any output from your nodes. Any output that has this eye icon, you can do that and it's going to show you what the node will produce in real time. It will take animation in account. But to see that, we're going to add another input. So right click under your first input, go down to the input, and this time we're going to select time at the bottom of the list. Then if you preview the output, it's going to be pure white because time is a very high value that's going to keep going up and the preview is only going to show you colors in the zero to one range. So we have to use a function to get our time to stay within that range. We're going to right click and go to the scalar function in the menu and we want to use the sine or cosine periodic function. Plug the time in it by clicking and dragging the time into the sinus slot. And if you click on the preview this time around, you should see an animation going from black to white. The sine function is going to give us a value between minus one and one. So one thing we can do to make sure that it stays between zero and one and we don't have that one second or that time where the screen stays black here, we're going to divide the value by two and add 0.5. For that, you're going to use the scalar operator, operator on numbers, and we want to select divide and drag the output of the sine function into the first slot and divide by a value of two. This is going to give you a sign that goes up to 0 0.5. So we are going to be in the minus 05 to 05 range. Now we are going to add 0.05 to our result. So for that, we can grab the scalar operation node, press Ctrl D to duplicate it, drag and plug the output from the first one to the input of the second one and add 0.5. This is then going to give us a value that goes from zero to one. And we can 
remove the preview from the previous nodes to clean up our graph a little bit. We're going to use that value to animate a texture. So in the inspector, click the add a new file or resource button, the one with the plus arrow, and look for the noise texture. Click create to create it. Then in the noise slot, we have to add an open simplex noise. This will give us a generated noise that we can save to the disk by clicking the floppy disk icon. Click save as, and we're going to save it as a noise texture here. Now we have it in our file system tab. We can go back to our shader on the sphere. So select the sphere. You can use the back arrow in the inspector to go back to your shader material. We want to add a texture from our constants here to the graph. We are going to drag and drop the noise texture onto the empty slot. So we'll have our noise texture and plug our mesh's UVs into the UV slot so it maps onto our sphere properly. Now we can get the fun started. We are going to combine our noise texture with our animated time cycle value. Let's create a scalar operation again and we can do a few things. So we could add the two and you can look at the result. It's going to make our noise pretty white and then it's going to go back down to its starting form. You can then use one of two operations to achieve the transition effect. You can use the add or the subtract one. We're going to use that animated mask here to hide parts of our mesh and we will do that using the round function. So let's add a new scalar function. We're going to grab our sin block here, control D to duplicate it and drag it to the right of our graph. Then plug the output of our scalar operation into it. Change the function to something like floor, round or seal. The round function is going to round our floating point value, our alpha value to the nearest integer, so zero or one. You can see that we get a lot of black and we get very little white here. And these are the two values that we're going to use as our alpha on the sphere. So you can change the scalar operation here after you divided your time value. You can directly plug the result from the division into your scalar operation here. You will see that you will get a convincing result from black to white. We then want to plug the output of the function into our alpha slot. You can see to the graph's color how the blue line represents a floating point value from 0 to 1. The purple one is representing a vector 3, a value of 3 coordinates. And you can see the color change as Godot automatically downcasts our texture with three color channels down to a floating point value when we use the scalar operation here. Our graph is quite simple. And if we go back to the view, you will see now our sphere disappear already. So this is the effect for you. You can even see the shadow update thanks to the options that we have been using. If you want to get the glazing effect, the light effect around the sphere, we have to branch out from this node here to affect the emission parameter, the light emitting effect or parameter on our sphere. For that, we are going to use a second round function, but we are going to delay the effect in time. And to do so, we are going to use an other scalar operation. We're going to subtract some value to that graph. A very low value like 0.05, for example. And it's going to offset our effect slightly compared to the alpha result. We then want to invert the effect. So to do that, you create a new scalar operation. And we're going to plug this time the result into the B slot. We're going to subtract our texture to 1. 
one minus the texture is going to invert the effect. You can see it on the preview down there. And from there, we are going to use the round function once again. So I'm duplicating the round function above, which is going to give you this inverted animated mask that we are then going to use to colorize our emission on the node. To do so, we are going to use a vector operation. It's in the operators category. It's one you use to multiply colors together because colors are vector three values as far as shaders are concerned. So we're going to plug the output here into the first vector operator. It's going to convert it back to a vector three automatically for us. And then below it, we're going to add a color to multiply the result, this mask here with. So we're going to change the operation, vector operation to multiply and preview the results. We can now change the color down there using the color picker. And with an orange value, we're going to get some fiery glaze. Drag the output into the emission channel and we can go back to the view to see how we now have a second layer on our sphere with a bit of a glazing effect. You will notice one thing, it's that you have a seam in front of the sphere because our noise texture, our resource is not tiling. We want to go back to the resource and make sure that it is seamless. And with that, you will get a seamless result on our dissolve shader. There we go, that's how you create a dissolve shader using the visual shader editor. The graph can take a bit of time to create here, but I hope that this example shows you the value of having the animated preview at every step in the way instead of writing pure code. Because some of the operations are really quick to write by hand as code to type, but they are not visual in nature. It's hard to debug the shader visually. While with the graph, you can do that. This feature just landed back into Godot in version 3.1, and it's going to get improvements moving forward, most likely. I hope you will enjoy using it, but for now, I'm going to leave you and see you in another tutorial. Bye-bye.